Hi everyone, how are you doing? My uh, name is Papa Snow, and it's a pleasure to have you here at our cooking show. Welcome to the One Diana Food Festival 2020. Now this is a week dedicated to all of you there around the world, and we are here to share our talents and our skills with you by preparing some authentic dishes relevant to your country, right? We support each of you. We have a six day event here going on. Today is the first day for this event. It is currently Monday, the 8th of June, and today is day one of our event. Okay, and this is the day that we will be preparing African cuisine for you. Okay, we are preparing an authentic Ethiopian chicken dish called Dorawat, but we are doing it just a little bit different with the Guyanese twist to it. Okay, so it's a pleasure to have you here. Before we continue, I'd like to thank our sponsors. All right, I would like to thank ANS Marketing. Uh, we can go through all your marketing needs. I would like to thank Marchand Studios and also MC Production Studios for being here. And I would like to thank the sponsor of today's dish, which is Zahira Kao from Canada, who has made this dish possible for all of you today. So thank you very much and welcome to the show. All right, now today, ladies and gentlemen, we are actually going to be preparing Dorawat, okay? Uh, I would have already prepped and cubed up my chicken breast. And to truly keep it authentic, I took the time the other day and we prepared our Berbera's paste, right? Which is what's going to, you know, ah, just bring it all together, okay? Of course, we have our onions, our potatoes, and the rest of our ingredients here. So let me go ahead and let me start the cooking on this bad boy and get it in place. Now this dish normally takes about an hour to prepare, okay, if you're preparing it this way. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this deep dish pan right here. And we have a little fire here. I'm going to use some olive oil. Squirt a little bit of olive oil here. got a half teaspoon salt, a half teaspoon black pepper, and I've got some cardamom here as well. Of course, our Berbere paste has a ton of other seasonings in it. Uh, if you need the recipe for our Berbere paste, please check my blog and you will see the recipe for the authentic Berbere paste, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start seasoning up some of the chicken. Nothing too fancy. Remember, why is this cooking inside of the Berbere paste? It's gonna get a lot of seasoning here as well. The rest of this is pretty much gonna get tossed in shortly. You know, not doing anything too fancy. I've gotta save some because we have another dish we have to make as well, right? So real simple, real easy. Just heating up the pan. All we need to do is heat up the pan and then we're gonna be proceeding, right? But everyone out in Africa, uh, let, let me first tell you, right? We actually have a network office in Africa for the Drop Care Worldwide Network. I would like to give a shout out to my boy Doug, who is out here in Ghana. Uh, you know, my father was over there uh, in 2017, and we assisted and we continue to assist in some well drilling programs to make sure that the women there, they don't have to walk miles to get water, because I know how things are over there, it's a little hard. And our network, we will continue to send support over to Africa for all of our brothers and sisters out there. We have a lot of good people out there, a lot of skilled individuals, and we just want to make life a little bit better for you guys. But today, it's all about the entertainment, right? All right, so my olive oil is getting hot. I'm only going to use maybe about a pound of chicken, chicken breast. I'm not going to use more than that. Right now, for anyone who does a lot of Guyanese cooking, especially especially if you can make if you can make curry, um, turn out this fire a little bit, yeah, it's sticking. So I've actually got to put a little bit more oil in here. Pan got a little too hot, so add a little bit more oil. We get this stainless steel pan to really heat up. All right. And then I'm just going to start to brown my chicken slightly. And 
What I'm doing is I'm adding about a quarter, actually about a half a cup of butter right now. I'm gonna let this chicken cook for a little bit, then I'm gonna add in the onions. And I'm gonna cook the onions till they're very translucent. Okay, then I'm gonna add in my Berbere paste, okay? After everything is combined, I can see where the Dorawat gets its flavor from, right? It's almost like you're doing a kind of a buttered chicken. And this butter is gonna have to condense down. I'm not gonna add any more butter here, right? But I do want this to cook up correctly. Now, here in our little ingredients dish, we have tomato paste, we have potatoes, we have onions, we have ginger, we have garlic, you know, and that's basically all you're gonna really need because everything else is in the burger paste. So I'm gonna go ahead, the butter is bubbling up and the chicken is basically halfway cooked right now, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just add in my onions in the meantime. Start to cook down my onions. You know what? I'm gonna add in the garlic and the ginger at the same time as well. And I'm gonna let this cook down. Okay, uh, just letting you know all over the world, there's a lot of people fighting this COVID thing. And healthy eating is probably going to be the number one way to prevent you guys ever catching COVID, right? Getting the right vitamins and nutrition into your body to build up your immune system. That is definitely the way to go. And, uh, you know, you can also check us out. Uh, make sure you check the link below this video for the recipe and the instructions as to how to prepare it, right? Thanks a lot. I'll be back with you in just a second here, right? I want to show you inside the pot in fact. You guys can see this here. So this is kind of what we're looking for. We're letting the onions cook down a little bit more. I want some translucency in the onions. Once I know the onions are properly cooked, then I can add in my paste, my barbier paste, right? You know guys, and I'm gonna tell you this, and this is to everybody in Africa, I really thought this dish would have been hard to cook. Right, I thought, you know, you, you hear authentic dishes, you hear international dishes, and I'm not used to cooking African dishes. But I realized something. Because I'm Guyanese, African is part of one of the cultures that make up Guyana, right? So all my life learning how to cook in a Guyanese household, it actually helped me out a lot because I realized how much African cuisine has been incorporated, or African culture has been incorporated into our country and into our cuisine. So, you know, big up to everybody in Africa. Thank you guys very much. You know, uh, I have six races in me, so definitely, you know, I'm part of the tribe, so a little bit different look, but part of the tribe nonetheless. And we're gonna hook something up for you guys. Really, really nice right now. It's pretty cool. Right? So this is just one stage of it. I don't want to add too much. I don't want to add too much of this bourbon paste, right? Remember, it's really spicy and it's really strong. It smells really good too, right? It's just As soon as this goes in that pot, you're going to think we're in a different country. That much is a fact. Not using all. Now, remember, some of these ingredients I would have toasted and preset before I process them. Right? And I started making my paste. The, the regular uh, Dorawat, from what I've seen, is normally very dark. I didn't really want my Dorawat looking very dark. In fact, this Dorawat recipe will be inclusive of white wine. Let me not show you the brand, right? But white wine will be in this one, right? Uh, 
It is rated as a three to four star meal. And I think that's really, really good. And it can be served up with nice potatoes, a few other things as well. Now, there's a long way to cook this, and then there is a fast way to cook this. I'm doing it the fast way. I'm doing it the way that you would probably get it in a high-end restaurant, All right? Next is your potatoes, because they do take a little bit to cook. There you go. And my tomato paste. And just stir all of your ingredients together. Mix it well. Incorporate all the ingredients together correctly. Right? It almost looks like a regular stew, huh? Except different, different spices, right? The spices make the difference, right? And this is where I'm going to add in my extra spices, which is a half a teaspoon of black pepper, cardamom, and also salt. Right, you gotta add it in, right? Just sprinkle it in. And mix it up well. You could add more butter if you want. Uh, I don't want too much butter here. I'm not cooking a whole, whole bunch. I'm just cooking some for the show today. And of course, some for our guests. And this here gets to simmer down for maybe about two minutes, and then I'm gonna add some water. Uh, and I'm gonna have, actually I'm gonna add my wine next, reduce that, and if I need water, I'll go that way, right? So when it comes time to adding the wine, I'm only gonna use about a third of a cup of white wine, right? Of course, I do want this to simmer down slightly. I also want to get a little bit of a charring at the bottom with the onions, right? This way now, when I use the wine, it gets to deglaze the bottom of the pan, get all those nice little tender morsels up and just keep it really, really good. And then I'll reduce the sauce, and if I need to add water, I'll add some water. Uh, I'm more than likely have to add a little bit, but I probably wouldn't add nothing more than maybe about a quarter cup, right? Uh, so we're just gonna watch and see how it's cooking and move with that particular style now, right? But like I said, after we put everything in, it does have to simmer for maybe about, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, roughly, right? That, that could range depending on your elevation, you know, where you're at, right? Climate, temperature, things like that. So it could vary within that time, all right? So I do want you to see what it's looking like right now because it is cooking pretty fast, which is very good. Yeah, it really does. It really does make the pot what it is, right? I, I think that is like one of the key components, right, to this particular dish, right? Without that fenugreek seed, you couldn't do this dish. So I'll just tell you this right now. That is like the key ingredient right now in terms of your spices. Fenugreek and cardamom, right? Two very important spices for this particular dish. Let me show you guys a little bit into the pot. Show you what's going on here. Okay, get you guys right in there. As you can see, we've got some caramelization happening with the onions and the butter in the bottom. The potatoes are starting to brown and they are observing the seasoning from the berbere sauce or berbere paste, whichever you would like to call it, right? So that's pretty good, pretty, pretty cool. Okay, what I may do actually, I may end up adding that back the rest of this uh, barbeer paste because I do want it a little bit more rich and I want a little bit more spice to it because I can actually smell the level of intensity right now. Pretty good at that. 
So I may incorporate this a little bit better now. Oh my god, that's in it now. Time for the booze. So, I've only used about a quarter cup of white wine. And I'm using that to basically help deglaze the pan. And I do want to reduce the wine, basically burn out some of that alcohol, evaporate out some of the alcohol. It smells very good. And the wine is reducing very fast because the pan is actually pretty hot. I'm going to turn down the fire a little bit. Just so I can reduce down all of this. I have a couple more. Yeah, guys, so I am currently reducing down uh, the wine and at the same time deglazing the pan with the wine. All right, getting all of this stuff off of the bottom. All of this stuff is the seasoning. This is the barbeer paste that is actually charring slightly at the bottom. And that's okay. It is okay. Because the wine will help to deglaze it. Thank you very much, Anthony. Huh? And just add a little water here. Stir it up, cover it down, and let it simmer. And one of the very last things that we're gonna do at the end of this, before this thing gets too, uh, too finished, is add in our eggs, okay? In fact, I could actually add in the eggs now because this is a faster way. I've added in four boiled eggs, right, hard boiled eggs. Add a little bit more water. Actually, add about a half a cup of water. Stir in, put it on the back burner, and simmer. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. This is seriously good. I'm gonna have to make this on a regular. Yeah, that's really good. I think I treat. I got the new weekly stew dish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna make this. Mind I say, right? First time I've ever made this dish, right? So just letting you know. But it tastes, it tastes really, really good. I was like, hmm, I wonder how it's gonna turn out, right? But now I realize why this one is kind of uh, on a four star level right here. All right? And I will show you what the stew is looking like before I put it to simmer down completely. Okay, so let me show you guys what is going on here. So it almost looks like an egg curry stew type thing, but it is really, really good. It is really, really good. You know, so I want you to get the get the hang of this one. Y'all need to try this, right? If uh, if you're in Guyana, right, you can go to certain stores. I can't really say their names right now, but you can go to certain stores and you can get this and it is amazing. Turn on this back burner, keep this back burner on low, a very low fire on the back burner, and move him over, right? And now you cover him down for about 10 to 15 minutes, if that. You don't even need to do more than that because the chicken is already cooked, the seasonings are already incorporated, uh, the type of flavor that you want is already there. The potatoes are pretty much cooked at the moment. Uh, within the next 10 minutes, the potatoes will be finally cooked and the eggs are already saturated in the seasoning for the barbeer paste. And it is really, really good. So in about 10, 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how thick you want your sauce, right? You can actually stop this dish 
and that's it. We would have had a door wide, right? So uh, you will see me back in just a few moments, okay, after this commercial break, and then we'll be able to show you the plating of our door wide, and I hope that you really enjoy this. Make sure you try it at home, whether you're in Africa, whether you're anywhere in the world, once you go get your hands on fenugreek seeds, you'll definitely be able to do this dish like a boss. And don't forget, this recipe I'm using here has white wine inclusive of it, okay? I didn't use cayenne pepper. Uh, I used our local variety of pepper, which is Scotch bonnet, and a few other local ingredients when making the barbier paste. So make sure you check out the video that we have in my blog, right, for the barbier paste recipe. Make sure you like, Click subscribe and link below and you'll always be able to get more videos from us and stay tuned because we still have a lot more shows coming up so see you back in a couple of minutes let me do this other piece Chip on my some rain. all right so we've got to switch over here let me grab my ingredients for this tarragon black pepper uh, coriander, masala, this is jeer, mm -hmm. this is jeer, this is masala, right? Okay, go. All right, and my shawarma is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to add a little soy into it. All right, so we need to make a yogurt-based marinade, okay, for the chicken. So I'm going to throw some of this yogurt, this is Greek yogurt, uh, pretty much a heavy yogurt. It was hell to find it, by the way, in Diana. Like to find a yogurt without flavor. That was hell. Every yogurt we were looking for was like, either something with strawberry or tea, I can do that. Okay, so put the yogurt, I'm about to dig in some coriander. Mind I say, you're gonna get the recipes directly at the bottom of this link. When you click subscribe and share, you will get the recipe on the show. So I put about a half a teaspoon of coriander. I'm like an average boss, right? Put a half a teaspoon masala. Let me get the pepper. Half a teaspoon jira. About a teaspoon of black pepper. I like black pepper. Black pepper is not bad. Very good for me. Mm -hmm. huh? Add a little tarragon. And this is like half a teaspoon tarragon. Mind I say, right, when you know what you're doing, you can move really, really fast. Okay? And since I already have something else on the fire, I do want to move a little faster. I'm going to use about a teaspoon of some real hot Guyanese Scotch bonnet pepper sauce, right? I like my food slightly spicy. Well, that's probably a little bit more than slightly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As it is right here, we're going to mix. We'll just mix this in. So this is about a cup of yogurt, right? Nothing more. And I'm still missing my turmeric. But since I know this yogurt was slightly bland, I'm not going to use turmeric by itself. I'm actually going to use curry powder. I like using curry powder to make things other than just curry. Right? So we got some curry powder here. And I actually want to throw in a bay leaf or two. So I do have some bay leaves here. Uh, pull them out, just kind of crush them up. And not anything too, too fancy. Here's a couple, right? And there's something I'm missing. And what am I missing? I'm missing salt. Right? And also olive oil. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in this mix too, right? Not much, about a teaspoon of olive oil. about half a teaspoon of salt. And boom, that's it. You have 
your marinade mix for your chicken shawarma, uh, right? So now, real fast, I'm just mix this up. Remember, this is a yogurt-based marinade, and technically, you have to look for a 24-hour marinating time, right? However, the types of spices that I've used, they're pretty strong, and they're going to help me out a lot as it pertains to cooking my chicken. Right? I hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. Right? Because doing what you gotta do. Not much onion. Okay, so before I before I even touch this stuff, right? Gotta wash my hands. clean, you know, all the time. That's how we do it. Okay, so this is a chicken breast that we have sliced up for our shawarma. And what we're going to do here, just spread them out simply and take the marinade, drop it in, and then we get to get our hands messy. Right? Then our hands can get messy. Of course, I could have put more turmeric, I could have put a lot of other things, but I really didn't want that. And I'm gonna go ahead and just mix all of this stuff up. I've kept, I've kept the chicken sliced really, really thin. I'll show you guys what's going on here, right? I'm just mixing it into the marinade. I want it to marinate good. And then we're gonna char grill this on a flat skillet, basically. Or, or you know, pan sir, however you wanna call it. But I'm gonna slightly char it there. If you have a blowtorch handy, you can actually use a blowtorch and you can cook it down really fast if you want that. Um, I don't. Let me show you guys what's going on right here to everybody on the Facebook feed, right? We are actually just mixing up our chicken, our chicken breast strips for our shawarma, and we are mixing it in the yogurt marinade, right? With all of those nice little spices and everything else that I would have just put in. Now I'll just sit there, let this sit, and, you know, absorb the marinade, okay? Also, a little trick, I did allow my chicken to get to room temperature before doing this, okay? That'll help the chicken absorb the acids from the pepper and the spices that are released here, okay? Stick this over here. Ah. And now I can leave that for a minute and go back to the other dish. show you guys this is Dora Watts with the white wine deglaze sauce in it it is really good okay so this is the first meal this is our day one so much respect to everyone in Africa who has been affected by COVID-19 this is my tribute to all of you in Africa Please stay safe, my brothers. Stay safe, spread love, peace, stay healthy. Mm -hmm. 